today we are going to study about hiatus hernia firstly the types of hiatal hernias there are four types type 1 which is the most common type which accounts for 70 to 80 percent is the sliding hernia type 2 which is the rolling hernia also known as paraesophageal hernia and type 3 is the mixed type in which both sliding and rolling hernia is present in type 4 a part of the abdominal viscera it is present within the defect the abdominal viscera can be omentum or transverse colon now uh, the type 1 or also known as sliding hiatal hernia it is characterized by upward dislocation of the cardioesophageal junction into the posterior mediastinum see this is uh, this can be seen in this diagram also there is this is the sliding type of hiatus hernia in this you can see that uh, this is the esophagus and this is the stomach and this is the esophageal sphincter and this is the part where the esophagus it communicate with the cardiac portion of the stomach and this is known as the cardioesophageal junction in sliding type of uh, hiatal hernia what happens is there is upward dislocation you can see that there is upward dislocation of the cardioesophageal junction above the diaphragm see this is the diaphragm and there is a dislocation upward dislocation of the cardioesophageal junction where the cardiac part of the stomach it goes uh, upward up above the diaphragm now the point to remember here is that the stomach even though there is a uh, upper dislocation of the cardioesophageal junction the cardiac portion of the stomach but still the stomach remains in the usual longitudinal alignment and this is a potential question so you should remember this that the stomach still remain in its uh, usual longitudinal alignment and we can see that there is higher incidence of hiatal hernia in people having inguinal question also this is a potential question to show so you should uh, remember this one and majority of the patient with hiatal hernia they are asymptomatic now the severity of the reflux disease it will depend upon the size of the hiatal hernia now we will talk about type 2 or also known as rolling or para esophageal hernia see in this we see that the cardioesophageal junction is undisplaced whereas in the type 1 there was upward dislocation of the cardioesophageal junction so since the cardioesophageal junction is involved in type 1 there will be reflux disease but the reflux disease will be uncommon in type 2 and in type 2 what happens is, is that a part or whole of the stomach it herniates into the thorax immediately adjacent and to the left of the undisplaced cardioesophageal junction you see in this dis diagram that this is the stomach when a part or this is the uh, stomach and when a part or whole of the stomach it herniate into the thorax just left to the uh, cardioesophageal junction it then it is known as the rolling type of hiatus hernia now we will study about the complications of hiatal hernia in case of sliding hernia uh, we know that there will be reflux disease since the uh, gastroesophageal junction is involved there will be reflux and reflux will lead to esophagitis which is the inflammation of the esophagus 
this inflammation this chronic inflammation of the esophagus will uh, lead to metaplasia of the squamous epithelium of the esophagus to columnar epithelium leading to barrett esophagus now barrett esophagus can lead to um, adenocarcinoma it is a risk factor for adenocarcinoma see that barrett esophagus it causes it is a risk factor for adenocarcinoma but not for the squamous cell carcinoma of esophagus since there is reflux of the secretion of the esophagus and gastric content it will cause asp uh, it might cause aspiration of these uh, particles into the lungs which will cause pneumonia and it also plays a minor role in asthma in case of uh, rolling type of paraesophageal hernia uh, see that uh, you see that there is uh, the this is the herniated part of the stomach into the thorax since it herniate into the thorax it may compress upon the lungs and it will cause a respiratory complication dyspnea and since there you can see that there, it has this hernia hat a fundus a body and a neck this neck can get obstructed and can cause obstruction and this obstruction might lead to redu reduction in the blood supply and lead to strangulation and also it can cause hemorrhage the other complication can include uh, since if aspiration which is very uncommon in case of rolling type of paraesophageal hernia uh, so pneumonia is rare in this case now the diagnosis the investigation for diagnosis it include chest x-ray and perium swallow and fiber optic esophagoscopy in chest x-ray uh, we will the uh, we will uh, chest x-ray we will take the chest x-ray of the patient in the upright position in the upright in the upright position which will show air fluid levels in behind the cardiac shake now this is the point to remember here that uh, we will see air fluid levels behind the cardiac shadow this is a potential question and now in cases of para but it will be seen only in cases of para esophageal hernia now in case of barium swallow it is more accurate in identifying a para esophageal hernia which will show that the stomach is above the diaphragm see this is a potential question that for diagnosis we use barium swallow and fiber optic esophagoscopy and but barium swallow cannot be used it is very difficult to demonstrate the sliding type of the sliding uh, the sliding type of hernia as the gastroesophageal junction is it is very difficult to identify and also the sliding hernia can often spontaneously reduce so barium swallow cannot be used in case of uh, to detect sliding type of hiatus hernia now the third one is the fiber optic esophagoscopy it can it is used for classification as well as for diagnosis of hiatal hernia the sliding hernias can be easily diagnosed by identifying by identifying the prox proximal migration of the je junction a paraesophageal hiatus hernia is identified on retroversion of the scope by noting a separate orifice or separate opening which will be adjacent to the je junction into the uh, into which the gastric rural folds ascend so what we will see is there will be a separate opening which will be just next to the gastroesophageal junction in case of 
paraesophageal hiatal hernia and in case of sliding hernia we will see we will use a esophi um, fiber optic esophagoscope endoscope and we will introduce into the esophagus and we will see that there will be proximal or upward migration of this J junction and this will help, help in diagnosis now how we are going to manage this case of uh, hernia management uh, we can go for medical management surgical or surgical management medical management uh, is given in asymptomatic patients and we uh, it is point to remember that about half of the sliding hernias sliding hiatal uh, hernias they are asymptomatic and thus it does not require any treatment but majority but the symptomatic patient they need conservative programs which include we should give a frequent meals and low fat low fat uh, low fat diet should be given with high protein this will increase the lower esophageal sphincter tone and the patient should be advised to sleep with the head elevated and avoid sleeping immediately after meal we can also give drugs uh, like antacid and h2 blockers and prokinetic drugs now the surgical treatment the indication for surgical treatment are the patient having um, esophageal injury like ulcers and strictures and barrett esophagus in case that uh, in case of failure of medical therapy where there is a relapse of the slightest hernia and patient who require long-term dependency on proton pump inhibitors especially if they are younger than 50 years of age and the fourth one is when the patient is non-compliant when the patient is non-compliant to the uh, PPIs so we have to go for surgical management or the patient uh, medication are a financial burden financial burden and they prefer a single intervention and do not want to go for long-term drug drug treatment the objective of surgery is to restore the uh, JE junction in its normal intra-abdominal position the procedure of uh, choice uh, we will do the procedure of uh, choice is laparoscopic nissen fundoplication in this what we do is uh, we take a lapros we use a laparoscope and we hold on to the fundus of the stomach and then we wrap it around the lower esophages and then suture it in the place so again it is uh, the it is a pot potential question that the procedure of choice for sliding hernias is laparoscopic nissen fundoplication now what is the management for paraesophageal hernia in paraesophageal hernia earlier we used to think that the complications they are present uh, the complication will be present in both symptomatic as well as asymptomatic paraesophageal hernia so we should go for surgical treatment in both symptomatic and asymptomatic cases but now uh, the studies point out that repair of the asymptomatic cases or minimally symptomatic cases of paraesophageal hernia it is not of much benefits so for symptomatic patients for symptomatic rolling hernia or paraesophageal hernia we will go for surgical correction which is the fundoplication, nissen fundoplication. For asymptomatic ca uh, cases, we will watchful waiting is advised. We go for reduction in surgery. We go for reduction of the hernia, herniated stomach back into this uh, abdomen. Then we go for fundoplication. now we're going to discuss some of the questions
which are important which are asked first the first question the most common complication seen in hiatus hernia is okay i'll give the answer it is esophagitis esophagitis which is caused by the reflux of the gastric content into the esophagus causing inflammation of the esophagus aspiration pneumonitis and esophageal strictures also occur but it is not the most common complication and now the second question second question uh, it uh, says most useful investigation in rolling hernia in females are is the most useful investigation in rolling hernia in females the answer is barium meal now the third question what is true about paraesophageal hiatus hernia the options are surgery indicated in all symptomatic cases paraesophageal type is more complicated paraesophageal type is more common or it is common in infants the correct answer is surgery is indicated in all a uh, all symptomatic cases and paraesophageal type is more complicated so the uh, we have two correct options in this question and the wrong one is that paraesophageal type is not the most common type the sliding hiatus hernia is the most common type and it is not common in infants now the next question the true about a uh, sliding esophageal hernia in all cases except esophagus always is always short cardiac goes through hiatus what is true about sliding esophageal hernia so esophagus is always short the cardiac goes through hiatus the cardiac and fundus goes through hiatus and peritoneal sac goes with paraesophageal hernia the correct option is the uh, correct option the esophagus uh, the first we will see that uh, the esophagus it is not short where uh, in instead it is it becomes longer in case of sliding hernia cardiac goes through hiatus this is the correct option the cardiac goes through hiatus but not the fundus so this is the third the c option is the uh, is wrong and peritoneal sac goes with paraesophageal hernia this is also wrong and now the next question the hiatus hernia is treated by the correct option you know it that surgery when medical treatment has failed and is an fundoplication these two are the correct options now the next question last question all of which are true about nasal fundoplication except it is done for gerd this is correct reinforcement is done only in the anterior half this is wrong upper part of stomach is plicated around the lower esophagus this is correct it is done for paraesophageal hiatus hernia this is also correct so the only wrong answer in this is b option in fundoplication what we do is uh, we use a laparoscope and we hold on to the fundus of the stomach and we uh, wrap it around the lower esophagus and then we suture it in the place thank you for listening please don't forget to subscribe